The first time we told this story was in response to a letter from an eight-year-old boy who wanted to know, and I'm quoting now, is Cub Scouting a good deal for kids? Well, we said yes, we thought it was. But sometimes we thought it was even a better deal for their parents. Now, these particular parents in our story are friends of mine. They're the Whitneys, and they live in a beautiful house in Brentwood. Hmm. Well, finally decided to come home, huh? What are you still doing up? It's after three o'clock in the morning. Where have you been all night? Well, uh, after the opera, we went over to Josie's for a bite to eat and got to talking, you know. Where's Mr. Whitney? Working late again. I thought when you got to be the president of a big company, you got other people to do your work for you. Else why be president? Not David. He's very conscientious. Did you just doze off there, Angie? Indeed not. In addition to my duties as a housekeeper, I've also taken on those of the mailman. Your son wrote you a letter. Oh, a letter, huh? It's a sad day and age when a mother and son living under the same roof have to write letters to each other. Mm -hmm. We expected you to look in on him before you went out tonight. Mm. Well, the things got so rushed. You know, I was late for dinner as it was. Mm-hmm. He's such a good boy. Yes, he is. You know, he's just crazy about you. Don't you? <laughs> We're good friends. Yeah. Well, good night, Mrs. Whitney. Uh, Angie. Mm -hmm. You know, you're the prettiest mailman we've had yet. Oh, get to bed. <laughs> your late hours have touched your head. <laughs> <laughs> David? Hmm? Oh. Hi. Hi. Say, I'm sorry about tonight, Becky. The plans for that new passenger jet came through, and I just had to go over them with Foley. Plans as modern as that, you'd expect they'd have a telephone. Yeah, I should have called. Yeah. We got started, and... You know, this plane is the biggest thing we've ever attempted. You don't seem to realize just how important it is. I try to understand, David, but really it's kind of difficult for me because I... Well, I know so little about it. Well, it's, it's, it's a thing that's hard to explain. Yes. Yes, of course. However, I would appreciate it if you'd ask your secretary to notify me when you can't keep our appointments. You know, it's a little embarrassing when you're... I honestly don't know what to tell her. Yeah, I'm sorry. I should have called. Won't happen again, I promise. Good night, honey. I'm dead. David. Hmm? We have a letter from our son. From where? <laughs> From his bedroom on the second floor. <laughs> oh, come on over here and sit down for a minute. Okay. Look at this. It's pretty good handwriting for a boy of his age, don't you think? <laughs> Very. Dear Mom and Dad, you notice no more Mommy and Daddy. Mm -hmm. If I don't join the Cub Scouts, I'm going to be old. Chris and Pete belonged for a year. I want to join. I can pay for it out of my allowance. Allowance, A-L-O-U-N-C-E. <laughs> like mother, like son. Please, please, can I? David Whitney, Jr. So formal. What are Cub Scouts? Oh, you know, they're uh, little Boy Scouts. Oh, yeah, yeah, I got it. I got it. And look, mm -hmm. here's the parents' Cub Scout magazine. See? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you what you do. Here, you give them this in the morning. Hmm? Those clubs always take you for extras. Good night, honey. Well, then it's all right. I tell him he can join. Oh, sure. It'll make a man out of him. part here very carefully. Cub Scouting is a program for boys and their parents. The program has been developed so that your interest and help are necessary for your boy to succeed as a scout. You'll notice there's nothing in there about Angela the Maid taking any hikes or going on any outings looking for bugs. 
Now, I know this, Angie. Hey, Mom, did you get my letter? Is it all right? Chris and Peter Cubs, can I be one, please? Good morning, Duffy. Yes, I got your letter. Did Dad read it? What did he say? Can I? Yes, your daddy read it. And he says he thinks it'll be a wonderful thing for you to do. He left this for you. Gee, what's this for? Well, it's for whatever you might need, see? But it doesn't cost hardly anything to join the Cubs. Oh. Well, uh, I'd put it away anyway. I'm sure you'll find some use for it when you're a cub. Then I can join? This is the happiest day of my life. Okay, Duffy. Listen, Mom, uh, we have to be there next Friday. Oh. You'll tell Dad, won't you? Yeah. He's just got to be there. And well, you know how he forgets. Yes, honey, I do know, and I will tell him. But uh, where do we have to be? At the school, Friday night, 7.30. Oh. We're joining the cubs. We're joining the cubs? Yep. You'll tell Dad, won't you? <laughs> yes, I'll tell him. I promise to do my best to do my duty to God and my country to be square and obey the laws of the pack. You know, cubbing is for the whole family. You mothers and fathers have certain responsibilities as a cub parent. You'll be expected to attend our monthly pack meetings and to work with your sons on the cub achievement program. Do you accept these responsibilities? We do. Yes, uh-huh. All right. Now if the dads will pin their sons with these Cub Scout insignias. Oh, uh, couldn't Mr. Whitney make it? No, I'm sorry. He was detained. Oh, that's too bad. Will you pin your boy? Surely. Place the pin on your boy upside down. He must wear it this way until he has done his first good deed. Then you may reverse the insignia to right side up. <laughs> Mrs. Whitney. I'd like you to meet my wife. Oh, how do you do? How do you do? Mrs. Henry will be Duffy's den mother. Oh, how nice. Isn't that nice, Duff? Yeah. My goodness, the Henrys are in the Cubs full force, aren't you? <laughs> Must be a terrific amount of work for you, Miss Henry. Well, in my present condition, it is a little hard keeping up with the boys. <laughs> there are only six in my den, but they're all jet propelled. <laughs> well, if I can ever be of any help to you, just call on me. I'm calling. You can help me with the meeting on Friday. Oh, I'm sorry, Friday. That, that, that's not a good day for me. But any other time? A den mother can always use help, oh. mental and physical. Oh, excuse me. Yes, Shirley. But it's fun. I keep telling myself. Yes. So when you have some free time and you're feeling strong, why don't you call me? I certainly will do that. Where'd Duffy get to, dear? I don't know. Well, I'll see you later. Right. Bye, Jerry. Bye. Duffy, I, uh, I know it's hard for you to understand why your daddy didn't come tonight. Jerry's father was here. Chris is a Pete. <laughs> yeah, I know he was. They both of them were. I saw him. But, well, maybe they haven't got the responsibilities that your daddy has. I, I mean, business responsibilities. <laughs> Remember, he's the president of his company. He's the boss of thousands of people. And they're his responsibility, too. And, oh, he does a wonderful job looking after them. That's something to be proud of, Duff. And he's awfully good to us. We have a nice house. Carrie oh. has a nice house? Yeah. Of course he has, honey. Look, Duff. Uh, maybe someday you'll be a president of a big company like your daddy is. And and you'll have a little boy like you. And you want your little boy and his mommy to understand how busy you are. Now, he won't mean that you don't love them. It's just that you're busy, that's all. So don't be mad at your daddy, honey. You wouldn't want your little boy to be mad at you. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, Mom. Thanks, Duff. Welcome. You know, I, uh, 
I think I'd consider that a good deed. And so I'm going to turn your pin right around. How's that? Okay? How about some ice cream on the way home? I know. Let's hike home. Oh, well, we got the car. Please. Oh, I'm sorry. Of course, I'd love to. Terrible. We didn't play canasta. We played a thing called Scrabble. I found out I not only can't spell, I'm ignorant. No comment. What, may I ask, is that? Just a week ago, this was a number nine coffee can. And, madam, will you look at it today? Oh, another artistic triumph for the Cubs. <laughs> Where is my little monster? He's at the Cubs, transforming another batch of cans into heaven or you know <laughs> what. And just a quarter of seven. He couldn't still be there. An artist knows no time. Oh, well, the mother of the artist is going to find out. Can't imagine Mrs. Henry keeping them this late. Well, let me see. Henry. Here it is. Hello, Miss Henry. Miss Whitney. You're kind of working overtime, aren't you? When do you plan to close shop? Isn't Duffy there? He said, what? With his father? Oh, no. No, he didn't. Yes, all right. Thanks, Miss Henry. What is it? She said Duffy left there at 4 o'clock. That's three hours ago. Mr. Whitney, please. Uh, Betty, this is Mrs. Whitney. Is he there? Well, I'm sorry, you'll have to disturb him. This is very important. Yes, that's right. David, is Duffy there with you by any chance? Oh. David, something's happened to him. No, no, but he's been gone for hours and nobody knows where he is. David, when are you coming home? Please, you've just got to. I know something's happened to him. Well, he told Mrs. Henry that he had to leave early because he and his father were going on a picnic tonight because they couldn't go on the picnic next week. That's right. All right, but hurry, will you? Yes, Miss Henry. Is he home yet? No. No. No, I'm glad you told me. Yes, thank you. Goodbye. What is it, Becky? Who was that? That was Miss Henry, uh, Duffy's den mother. Did a Mr. Henry call you a couple of weeks ago about a picnic? Henry? Oh, yes. I don't know exactly what it was about. Something to do with Duffy, so I referred to call to you. Why me? You're his father. Oh, David, doesn't he have any interest in your son at oh, all? No, Vicki, that's not fair. You know how busy I've been. Busy, 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 I know. Look, Mr. Henry has put hours and hours every week in with your son, more than you give him a month, and you were too busy to answer well, a I'm phone call I'm sure from that him. his call couldn't have been this important. Not to you, no. But obviously it was very important to your son. It was so important, why didn't you have him call me back? Because he never called me. After your brush off, I guess he just decided to drop Mr. and Mrs. Whitney. Oh, I'm not blaming it all on you, David. I should have shown more interest, too. More interest in what? Duffy, the poor little thing. Both of us are always too busy. No wonder Mr. Henry took pity on him. What do you mean, pity? Just that. Mr. Henry told his son to tell Duffy that if he ever needed any help with the scouting, to come to him. 
Well, this afternoon, Jerry told Duffy that he'd share his father with him, and Duffy poked him right in the nose. You see, he's your son. He's proud, and he doesn't want a substitute. If he needed help, why didn't he come to me? Because he's not used to coming to you, David. Oh, it's true. You and your son are strangers. We're all strangers in this. Vicki. Oh, David, where is he? Right, where take is he? Take it easy, honey. We'll find him. We'll find him. <laughs> now, look. You called the police? I called them. Mrs. Henry's called all of his little friends, and nobody knows where he is. Well, come on, I'll sit down here. Sit down. I think I'll go out and just have a little look around, okay? I'll go with you. No, 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 no. No, you just stay here and you relax. No, I'd rather be doing something. I'll, look, I'll go to the park and, and you look around the school, all right? Oh, David. There's so much we have to straighten out. I do love you so much. All right. All right. Come on, let's go. Huh? Yeah. much of a picnic, is it, Duff? But, Dad, the picnic isn't tonight. It isn't. Well, I'll be dark. There's a nice little fire. What'd you use, driftwood? So the picnic isn't tonight, huh? Well, it's lucky for us we both made the same mistake, huh? Now the two of us can have sort of a private picnic. Hmm? Hamburger? What's the matter? Don't you like hamburgers? I love them. You better dig in. There's two apiece, and I'm not saying I'm going to stop after two. Can't we come to the cup picnic next week? I'm sure we can. Now that we know the way, it'll be a cinch, won't it? What's the matter, Duff? Nothing. I just want us to go. That's all. You won't forget, will you? <laughs> no, I won't forget. And listen, what's this I hear about you needing help with your scouting? I don't know how to tie my tie. You don't? Well, after this, you come to your old man. Anybody will tell you he ties the roundest square knots in town, huh? <laughs> Good? You know, Dad, I was sort of hungry, too. <laughs> No sale. It's good. What's the matter with you guys? Don't you like my cooking? Dad, you're the greatest. You don't sound very enthusiastic. Well, I think your son has exhausted his store of enthusiasm. Come on, let's stretch out on the couch. There you go, Duffy. Oh, he sure is growing. Yes, little boys have a habit of doing that. I may be slightly prejudiced, but isn't he the most wonderful boy? <laughs> Simply a reflection of his parents. <laughs> Aren't we smug? <laughs> very. 
Vicky. Mm? I wish you could have seen Duffy this afternoon when I took him and the boys through the plant. He sure kept me jumping with his questions. You know, he's smart. Sure. They all are. I made notes of some of the questions they asked, and later on, Foley and I went over them. And by the time we'd figured out all the answers, we'd found out a couple of ways to improve our operations. That's wonderful. I just feel pretty foolish for a bunch of kids to come in and set us straight. Mm. Out of the mouths of babes. Yeah. <laughs> you know, Foley and his boys want us to go on a hunting trip over the first part of the holidays. Would you mind? But I thought you had to go to New York. No, I can wait till after the first of the year. I thought maybe by then you might be able to go with me. But it's a business trip. And you're a deductible. Oh, David. Come on, it'd be fun. We haven't had a real vacation for a long time. Oh, I'd love it. And anyway, they have wonderful sales in New York in January. We've got a date? Oh, darling, you have a permanent date with me. Promise? <laughs> I promise to do my best, to do my duty to my God and my country, to be square, and to obey the laws of the pack. <laughs> Come here. I'll sign your book. Mm -hmm.